What is happening YouTube? Just another follow-up video from my previous follow-up video on my electronics updates. I hope you're enjoying these things. I'm going to try to go through this as quickly as possible. First of all, I got the power supply built. Let's power it up. And as you can see, I actually got some voltmeters attached to this thing. So it did not come with a case. It did not come with the voltmeters. It did not come with the binding post. I added all of those. Not quite done with this thing yet. I haven't soldered in the wires for the voltage meters into the binding post yet. I am thinking about using some kind of connectors for that, but I need some crimping tools and haven't got any in, have not gotten into crimping yet, so I need to learn how to do that first. I'm going to go ahead and crank this thing up. One of the things that I notice about this thing is that the voltage kind of decreases on it. Like if I keep it at 10.9, you're going to see it slowly go down. Eventually, you're going to see this one go down to 11.9. Uh, it stops after a while. It starts to level off. It's just sort of um, you know these are these are decent this is a decent little little kit I like it but you know it's like you get what you pay for it was a really cheap kit people pay a lot of money for really good bench supplies and this thing doesn't offer current limiting doesn't have fuse protection so you know whatever I also added a switch to the back of it which is pretty nice otherwise you have to like keep plugging it in and unplugging it but it works it was a fun little kit to put together it was definitely a little tricky the transformer was really heavy like I said, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera up and we're going to show you some other stuff. Okay, so I rebuilt the XR2206 function generator. It mostly works. The sine wave doesn't work, but oh well. I got everything else to work. I can select frequencies with this little dip switch. I'm happy with it. I really am. It's still it's better than the kit that I bought. So I made an improvement to it. I'm happy with it. And look at this, the mixer. This is my mixer. I cannot believe I built this thing. I, it was hard. This, this took me a couple, this took me a good week to build, actually. So let me start here at the bottom of it. Uh, I'm using all of these as feet so that it's connected off the ground. There's not an enclosure for it. I need to be careful not to hit any stray wires into it. So this keeps it off the ground. And I have uh, mono inputs right here. Uh, four of them. They also have... Um, how do I say this, jumper wire inputs where I've got my ground connection and my signal connection. Grounds are the bottom ones here, and the signals are the ones on the top. Might be kind of hard to see in the camera. But from here um, in the back, I've got right out, left out, and then this is the DC jack in, and on top is a stereo out. So this is really handy. I can actually take this to my digital to audio converter, which goes to my computer, and have a signal going in and record the signal, which is really nice. Or I could use something like my handy uh, mini chaos pad and have the signal coming into here and get a nice stereo effect going with it. It's really, really super handy. So I've got potentiometers for my signal levels here. I have panning potentiometers above them. And then these two switches basically just control the, uh, the boost. I don't have a, an on and off switch for the speakers. I could just you know, just take them out if I need to. I've also got it set up this way in case for whatever reason I blow one of these speakers, it won't be too hard to replace them. But hopefully I won't do that. These speakers are really cheap. They're like 50 cents a piece. So these two potentiometers just control the level of the speakers. They don't control the level coming out. It's basically just a straight up line level output. I hope to do a video talking about line level sometime in the future. But it's a simple line level out. It is a true stereo out, which is really nice. So all of this panning controls which of the speakers that the signal gets routed to more. In order to do that, I had to have two LM386 chips, one for the left and one for the right. And the hard part was preventing the signals, like this signal from linking into the rest of them and to the rest of them through the potentiometers. Really complicated stuff. And this is probably would have been better solved with buffers, but instead I just used a whole bunch of resistors to keep the signal from getting too far back in. And it doesn't really matter because at the end of the chain, you're going to amplify it back up anyways. So let's see if I can get a quick demonstration going for you. Get a couple batteries here. So for this one, we can just plug in the battery now. So it's on. I kind of wish that had an LED, which would indicate what's going on there. And then for this guy, just come into the DC jack. And we're on. That's a bad connection right there. Now all I need to do is get a ground connection and any of these will do and then we just get like a signal going it's 
So this is super handy for me. Because now I can also take in my original function generator that I built. There we go. Anyways. We start unhooking stuff now. Signals, signals, grounds, grounds, power. So the point of all of this was just so that I can do what you just saw, easily hooking all these things up together, and I'd accidentally fry something. That goes a long way. It really does. I like being able to edit. Here we go. So I haven't worked on the delay pedal because I really don't understand the circuit very well yet. I have some PT2399 chips and I want to basically breadboard up a few circuits using these guys and understand the circuit better so I can understand what these mods actually do. The, the, for the most part everything works but these two mods are not really working correctly and in order to fully understand what they're supposed to do I can basically rebuild the circuit on a breadboard and it's going to be difficult. I mean I, I put this kit together there's a lot of resistors a whole bunch of resistors in this thing. This was my old original um, Synthrotech 555 timer. I had a 9 volt clip coming out of it. It did not come with the DC jack. And I recently installed this DC jack instead just to make it a whole lot easier. So I can plug this in. Boom. In other news, I fixed the Monotron. The headphone jack is surface mount and it had a lifted pad. The tip had a lifted pad so it was no longer connected. And all I did was I routed a jumper wire from the uh, ring around to the tip and it works great now it's back to working again of course the speaker always worked but the problem was the audio jack was only the left side and that's just unacceptable so now this is in working condition I hope to use it in some jams coming up with the monotrons again along with the Bastille along with maybe some of these guys maybe using my new mixer I've been working with op amps a lot more. Now that I have a positive and a negative dual power supply voltage that's that's very consistent, I've been playing around with op amps. This one is a function generator and I might actually try to build this into like another function generator because I'm actually getting a very decent sine wave. This one produces a very robust square, triangle, and sine wave and I'm very pleased with the sine wave. Here is another interesting op amp circuit I want to demonstrate first. Here's an annoying sound. Here's that annoying sound even louder. Let's turn that annoying sound off. This is a simple sine wave generator and the whole purpose of this was just to test out this chip over here. Now first of all this chip is an op amp and the one over to the left I forget what it's called again I might write it down in the comments or something but essentially it's a kind of voltage regulator it takes the 9 volts coming into this battery and it gives a negative 9 volt supply which I can use to help power this op amp. So this is pretty exciting for me because this means that I can start building some op amp projects that can be supplied with a 9 volt battery very easily. You don't have to have this chip to do that. This is just a really cheap way to get it done. These chips were 20 cents each. That's an affordable solution for me. So the power supply provides two rails of voltage that are adjustable and as long as you don't connect those two grounds together you can actually use them as two separate power supplies but that's kinda dangerous uh, generally I only use the plus or I use them to power op amps now I don't really like my little connectors here because they're really squirrely so here's ground and I'm gonna take it into this blue rail and now it's connected to this bottom side as well through this white wire now here's where it gets tricky this is the negative it needs to go where 4 is. So I'm going to take it here to this rail. And then this is going to power everything up. It's also going to power up my little daughter board here. What you're listening to is a percussion synthesizer. And it's not very good, but it works. I did not design the circuit. I'm following the circuits out of this book. So one dual op amp chip, it's 
producing a square wave first, and then the square wave is going through the op app to produce even more ripple. So it's kind of the opposite of what a power supply does when it takes AC voltage and regulates it to DC voltage. This is taking a square wave and it's producing ripple on top of the square wave. Thank you once again for watching. I'm going to get back to focusing on more music. I'm going to be building some more stuff. Best of luck in all your endeavors. Keep studying, keep learning, and I'll see you at the